Well, hello again, everyone who is here to learn a little bit of English. As I've mentioned before, we will be starting when the timer gets down to zero and we will be doing a lesson about moving. So, stick around. I think you will enjoy that. Just waiting to uh do a few tests here to make sure make sure the audio is working. Sounds like it's working great. And we'll start in about five seconds. I think you'll like this lesson. I had a lot of fun putting this lesson together. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about moving. People sometimes live in one place and then they move to another place. Sometimes they move because they have to start a new job in a different city. Sometimes people move because they need to go to school. There are a lot of reasons to move. Sometimes children move out of their parents' house but we certainly um people certainly do move from time to time in their lives. Some people move more often than others. I have an uncle and aunt who have moved 19 or 20 times in their life. Uh personally, I've only moved uh probably five times in my life, maybe six. I have not moved a lot but moving is when you live somewhere and then you decide to take all of your things. You take everything you own and you uh go to a different place and then you start to live there. That's my best explanation of what moving is. Um it is something that uh is stressful. We talked about it I think in the lesson about stressful things um but it also can be very exciting. It can be exciting to decide that you want to live in a different part of the country or you want to move to a different country entirely uh or you just want to uh, live somewhere else for a time. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about moving. Before we get started, just a few things. I wanna say hi to Dave. Glad to see you here, Dave. I forgot to text Dave to let him know that we were having a lesson this morning and thanks to all of you who are here in spite of the fact that this lesson is happening an hour different than normal. It is now um as of last weekend, time changed in Canada. So, everything for me is the same time. It's still 8 30 here, 8 31 but for some of you, if you don't change your clocks twice a year by an hour, uh this might be at a different time. So, thanks for actually being here and uh Uh, being here for the lesson. Remember, if you have a question, use the form to ask the question. It's in the description below uh and Todd and Dave will also link it in the chat from time to time uh and do have really good English conversations in the chat. Gonna just go to the chat for a sec and say hi to Lolly and Judith and Noon and Norma and Amina and Dave the Canadian, Apple the Frog. I know uh Brent from Speak English with this guy is here. Adi the Thai, Norma. I know Sia's friend is here. I know uh Eugene from Etobicoke is here. I saw his name earlier. He said drink milk. <laughs> He's encouraging you to drink milk. Uh Adi the Thai is here. Maria C. Edna. I know Pedro said he was here for the first time. So, that's really cool as well. Uh just thank you to all of you who are here to uh learn a bit more English and to kind of improve your knowledge of the English language. So, uh I think maybe we should uh get this lesson started. How about we do that? So, the first slide I have has two verbs on it. The verb to move and the verb to move house. In Canada and I think in the United States, when you move, we just say move. When are you moving? I'm moving in three weeks. Um in the UK though, in Britain, when I watch British TV shows, they often say move house. Um are can you come out f- uh, do you wanna go out to eat this we- weekend? No, I'm moving house or when are you moving house? In a couple of weeks. So, just kind of ignore my explanation of the second phrase. You'll have to look in your British English dictionary to get a good description but in Canada, we just say move. When are you moving or when did you move um or uh do you need help moving? Uh I'm going to move in three weeks. By the way, I'm not moving. If you were wondering if this lesson is like a secret way for me to say I'm moving, I'm not moving. I'm not moving for a very long time. So, we have two different uh phrasal verbs, to move in and to move out and obviously, you can tell the difference. When you move in, it means that you are entering a place to live there, okay? So, you could say to someone, when are you moving in to your new apartment? Or you could say, when's your move-in date? Which is kind of how we refer to the day 
you move in somewhere. So, that's the day that you would be entering your new place. People can also move in with you, okay? When my son is done university, he will move in with us again. So, that just simply means he's going to live here again. And we have to move out which can be used the same way as well. When someone moves out, it means they leave a place. So, you could say, um when do you need to move out of your apartment? Uh what day do you need to leave? And you could say, oh, I need to move out in three weeks. Uh I need to move out on April 17th or something like that. So, and as well, when you live with other people, they can move out as well. I could say, oh, my son is going to university in September. He's going to move out at the end of August. So, move in, move out, the two directions of moving. And we have something called moving day. So, a lot of times when people are planning to move, uh they will refer to the day when they are going to move as moving day. The, uh they'll say, oh yeah, moving day is in a couple days for me. So, I need to get ready. I need to pack my stuff. Or you might say, uh oh, you're moving. When's your moving day? And you would say, oh, my moving day is uh April whatever, April 17th. I'm just using that date randomly. But the day when you move is called moving day and people will often refer to that with that name. They'll say, you know, when's your moving day? Oh, I'm my moving day is not for a few more weeks yet so I can relax. In English, we use the word stuff and we use the word things a lot. In fact, Jen and I were laughing the other day because we were having a conversation uh and we use the word stuff so many times it was making us laugh but when you move, you take all your stuff, okay? Before you move, you might need to pack all your stuff up and you need to put all your stuff in a car or in a van and then you need to drive your stuff across town or you need to drive to the next city. Then you need to take all of your stuff out and put your stuff in the new place. This is a very useful English word, the word stuff and we also use the word things like, oh, do you have a lot of things? To, when you move, do you have to take a lot of things with you? Oh, I need to get all my things ready because I'm moving in a few days. So, stuff and things just very um yeah, very useful English words to refer to all of the things that you own, all of the stuff that you owned. Boxes. When you move, you're going to need boxes. You're going to need a lot of boxing. But Bo- sorry, not boxing. Boxing is this. You don't need to do any boxing. You'll need a lot of boxes um but uh when you move, you want to put your stuff in boxes. It just makes it more convenient. You wanna put all of your things in boxes. So, you might go to a store and ask if they have any old boxes. You can actually buy moving boxes, boxes that are made for moving. When you go to a company to maybe rent a truck, that company might also sell boxes and you can buy some boxes uh in order to uh put your stuff in boxes so that you can move them. And you of course will want to sort things. When you sort things in English, it's not just when you're moving. You sort things anytime you want things to be organized. But when moving day is approaching in the days leading up to your move in date, you might want to sort things. So, you might want to uh get boxes and put all of your books in one box and put all your clothes in another. That I I like this picture because there's a box that just says stuff and you might wanna put your pillows in another box. And that way, you um when you sort things, you kind of um put all the things that are the same together and then it's a lot easier to find later. Then once you move in, When you're unpacking, it's easier to find the things you need if you took some time to sort. We also have this English verb to go through, phrasal verb to go through. When you go through stuff, it means that you kind of, let's say I had like a couple hundred books and I'm moving. I might wanna go through my books. That means I'm going to look at each of them and decide which ones I'm going to keep. Before I move, I might want to go through my clothing because there are things I don't wear anymore and it's probably a good idea to go through my clothes and say, okay, I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm going to keep this one. So, sorting is when you kind of organize things. When you go through your stuff, when you go through your things, 
you're kind of sorting but you're kind of looking for the things you want to keep and the things that you don't want to keep. And then of course, you need to box things up. You need to box up all of your stuff. Um this is kind of an interesting verb. You could say, I need to put my stuff in boxes but it's easier to say, I need to box up my stuff. Have you boxed up your stuff yet? When are you moving? Tomorrow. Have you boxed up but have you boxed up your stuff? No, I haven't started. That would be bad by the way. If you were moving tomorrow, I hope that you already have all of your stuff boxed up. Hopefully, you were able to sort and go through all of your things and you were able to box up what you're taking with you. To declutter. So, this is an interesting word. As you live somewhere, you um you just have more and more things that you own but you might not need all of them. In particular, if Jen and I were to move, we have a lot of mugs. So, in order to declutter, it means kind of to sort through and get rid of things. So, if I was to say, oh, we need to declutter a bit. It means you have too many of certain things and you wanna get rid of them. A common thing to do with extra stuff is to give it uh give it away give it to family or friends or donate it to a thrift store or a charity that will be able to resell those items in order to um make a little bit of money. So, uh when you declutter, it means you minimize the amount of stuff you have and it's just a good thing to do before you move. To give away, I kind of mentioned this. One of the things that you might do is you might give away a lot of stuff. I know the one time that Jen and I moved, we kind of went through our stuff and we gave away a few things. We gave some things to our neighbors. We gave some things to my brothers and sisters. Um sometimes when you're moving, it's nice to um give away things you don't need uh so that the move goes easier. There's less stuff to put in boxes if you give away some things before you move. And then I like these three verbs here. To chuck, to throw out, to get rid of. So, all of these mean to just simply throw something in the recycling or throw something in the garbage. Although, the last one to get rid of, you know, that can also mean to give to someone else. You know, I'm gonna get rid of my car. I'm gonna give it to my brother. But the first two, to chuck, actually, it's similar to throwing. So, it's the action of throwing something in the garbage or recycling. Uh, to chuck to throw out before you move. The more stuff you can chuck, the better. The more stuff you throw out before you, your moving date uh, is uh, it's just really, really helpful. Get rid of as many things as you can before you move. That's my recommendation if any of you are moving. Hey, let's do <clears throat> excuse me. Let's do a few questions here. Let me get to my question sheet. A couple of things to mention. One is I did turn subtitles on this time. I think that uh that was a feature that has been available. I was just gonna check it out. Yeah, and I think the subtitles, sometimes they're a bit delayed, the English subtitles, but oh well. Um let's see here. Let me get to the first question from Ruslan. Hi, teacher Bob. How are you, sir? If you were buying a new house, what style would you choose? Modern? and sleek or cozy classic. I like, yeah, it's interesting. I think I would want the top floor to be modern and sleek and I think I would want the bottom floor or whatever room I watch TV in to be cozy, uh like a cozy classic look. So, cozy for the room where I lay around and relax and then modern and sleek in the kitchen and the upstairs rooms, I think. I think that would be great. Uh let me see here. Um what else? I was gonna mention something else. Oh yeah, thanks for being here. All of you who have arrived even though the the hour changed. Uh if you're one of the people who have not subscribed, there is a subscribe button over here. Uh you should click it. Um it makes me happy. It's the thing that makes Bob the Canadian happy. Uh let's see here. From Yaroslav, morning. The wisest teacher Bob. Do Canadians like to move from time to time anywhere? What do you find the most difficult when moving? Thanks. Have a good weekend. So, yes, Canadians do move from time to time. I think during the pandemic, a lot of people actually moved. I think a lot of people were stuck at home 
and they got a little bit bored of their house and so they sold their house and moved bought a new house and moved. A lot of people moved during the pandemic. Um I personally my family like my brothers and sisters none of us have really moved very much at all. Like I moved out and went to university. I moved back in when I came home from university with my parents. Um and then when Jen and I got married we moved into a house and then we moved once more after that. I haven't really moved a lot in my life but some people do. Um and mostly I think the most common reason to move is for work uh, or for school. Um let's see here. From CS friend, hello there. My question is, is the immigration process to the United States very difficult? Thank you. God bless you. Um actually, I I have no idea. I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that for Canadians with unique skills, it's actually quite easy to immigrate to the United States. Especially like for me as a teacher, if there was a US state where there were a shortage, where there was a shortage of teachers, like let's say the state of Michigan didn't have enough teachers, it would be easier for me to immigrate there. Um so yeah, I'm not sure uh entirely uh what the difference is. Let's see here. From Judith. Hi, Judith. Hi, Bob. What kind of practical reasons can someone have for moving? What kind of reasons could you give someone to move to Canada? So, practical reasons for moving. So, here's um I actually have a relative who sells houses. Um their job is that they are a realtor. Um a common reason for moving. Work, school, sometimes when um uh when a marriage falls apart, when people get divorced, the you know one of the spouses has to find an apartment or house because they're no longer living together. Um and then probably the most common is when children are a certain age, they move. They move out. So, Those would be the practical reasons and what kind of reasons could you give someone to move to Canada? Well, certainly, you don't wanna move here if you don't like paying taxes. We pay a lot of taxes in Canada uh but um the reasons for moving to Canada. So, when we have students come from other countries, they say the air is incredibly clear and blue and it's very fresh. We don't have a lot of pollution especially in my area of Canada. And then there's just a lot of nature to see in Canada. I think those would be good reasons to move here. And there's good jobs as well. Uh from Mohammed, hi Bob. My dad's work in the banks. So, every four years we move to another place as his works workplace changes. And I think this goes on until he retires. It's kind of hard but fun. That's very common in Canada as well. Bank managers tend to move every three or five years. Um and I'm not sure why but I know the manager at my bank every three or four years, every five years, there's a new bank manager. So, um let's see here. Vitor says, one reason to move to Canada is that Bob lives there. (laughs) Yes, that that could be a good reason. Uh and then backing up, Norma says, yeah, moving is a good time to get rid of things and it's therapeutic. Yes. When I was in university, I would move every year and it was so nice because I would get rid of a lot of things. That's a very good point, Norma. Uh let's see here. Let me get to the next question from Juliana. Hi, Bob. Hope you're good. Quick question. Moving, relocate versus settle down. Aren't these the same? No. So, moving and relocate are very different. Moving is a general term for when you leave your apartment or house to go live in another apartment or house. Relocate, we usually use this to talk about when someone needs to move because of work. Like, oh, he's he's moving to Montreal. Yeah, he needed to relocate because of work. So, maybe he worked for an office in Toronto and that business also had an office in Montreal and he needed to relocate to Montreal. So, relocate kind of means moving for work in a way. Uh and settle down simply means to um when you just feel really um happy with where you are. Like, Jen and I obviously, we settled down here and started to have children. So, it means that yes, we did move but it's moving and then really liking where you are I guess would be my explanation. Um from potato. Hi, teacher Bob. Long time no see. My question is, what is a special thing do you take if you would move or if you would be moving to Canada? So, a few fixes there, potato. Uh a winter coat. 
uh, especially if you're moving to like um, Edmonton or Calgary or Ottawa or even in my area. Uh, make sure you have warm clothing with you and this is not um this is a very warm country in the summer but it's a very cold country in the winter um and if you have skates bring them. Uh let's see here. <laughs> Mode Egg says, what do you say I join an awesome teacher and his great community in a live lesson? Well, welcome Mode. Good to see you again. Awesome to see familiar names in the chat all the time and I see Norma and Linda saying hi to you as well. Very cool to have you here. Uh let's get to the next question. Winter Wright. Hi, Bob. What's your unforgettable moving? Have a nice day. So, a move that I made that's easy to remember would be so, when I was in university, every time I moved, everything had to fit in my car because I I went to university far from home and so, that's very memorable when all of your stuff has to fit in your car and that's all you can take. It's an interesting an interesting move. So, that was memorable and then also when I moved to Quebec. I moved to Quebec uh, many many years ago and I lived there for about a year, little under a year and then I moved back. Uh, That was interesting too because I went on the bus. So, everything I took had to fit in two suitcases. Uh let's see. From Boo Boy says, have you moved house before? Yes, a few times. Um It's always been interesting. One of the things I like best about it is it's an opportunity to go through all your stuff and get rid of a lot of things. Uh let me do one more question from Pi. Oh, do you consider yourself an organized person? My ex didn't sort things when he moved. I would say I'm fairly organized when I need to be but often I'm messy when I'm busy. That would be if I have a lot of time I think I'm a fairly organized person. Uh I'm also fairly organized on the computer but less organized in real life. Let's get back to the lesson everybody. To throw out your back. I thought I would mention this one uh because this is something that commonly happens when people move. People don't lift heavy things every day but when you move you need to lift a lot of heavy things. This guy is uh wincing in pain because um when you lift something heavy sometimes you throw out your back. This just means that you suddenly have a pain in your back usually when you're lifting something heavy and it's not very pleasant. So, this is not directly related to moving but certainly uh when people move the chance of throwing out your back is higher because you have to lift couches and refrigerators and other pieces of furniture and big boxes. Um the chance of you throwing out your back is pretty high. Okay, so just the standard word for putting things in boxes and putting things in suitcases is to pack. When you are moving, you need to pack your stuff, okay? You need to put everything in boxes. You need to put things in suitcases. You need to put things in bags. Whatever you are using in order to move, you need to put um your stuff in there. You need to pack. So, generally um we use this word as well when you're going on a trip. Before you go on a trip or on vacation, you need to pack. Before you go Uh before you move, you also need to pack. And then you need to label things. We had a picture earlier where the boxes were labeled books and clothes and those kinds of things. Um when you move, it's just a really good idea to label the boxes. Dishes from the kitchen, books, bedroom, kitchen. So, you either write on the box what's in the box or you write on the box what room the box needs to go into in the new place. This is a very cool thing to do or if you were me, I would write both. I would write like dishes put in kitchen or dishes kitchen and then the if people are helping you move, they know where to put the box when they get there. You might even write fragile on the box. When you say something is fragile, um you it means that it can break easily. So, if you have things like maybe you have like really expensive um dishes or you have maybe little um figurines or things that if you drop them, they would break. You would put them in a box. You would probably put them in old newspaper so that they're cushioned a little bit. 
uh, and then you would write fragile on the box. I think some people say fragile. I should check the pronunciation. I say fragile. I should check if other people say fragile. Maybe I'll ask uh, Brent in the chat what he says. Fragile or fragile. Make sure you look up that pronunciation. Um depending on where you live, it might have a different pronunciation. Uh and it might even say this side up. You might have things where you don't want them to be upside down when they are being moved. So, you pack them all nicely in a box and then on the outside, you would put a sticker that says this side up. It means don't put this box upside down because there are things in this box that must remain upright. You don't want them upside down. They need to stay uh, right side up or upright. Um I can't think of anything right now but Uh, I'm sure there's some things that you don't want upside down and you would put a sticker on it like that. You might use packing tape. So, packing tape is just a special kind of tape that's really good for putting on boxes when you close them. It's a little bit wider and it sometimes comes in a nice tape dispenser um and you can just put that on the top of your boxes really quickly and easily and it will hold your box is shut. Very handy if you are moving to close the boxes with some packing tape. And then storage. So, interestingly enough in North America, some people rent a storage locker or they rent uh space in a facility that has storage. Uh and then what they do is instead of moving everything to the new place, they put some things in storage. Sometimes people will move overseas or they'll move to another country temporarily. I know that a friend of mine as a teacher, he went to teach in Japan for nine months and so, he put a lot of his stuff in storage. So, this is just a storage locker. You can find and rent storage lockers in most places, uh most cities in Canada and the United States but uh sometimes when you move, you have too much stuff and so, you need to put some stuff in storage. Um and that's how we say it. We just say put it in storage. Yeah, I rented a storage locker. I'm gonna throw some of my things in storage um while I go away for a few months. You might hire movers. I've never done this. I have enough family and friends that when I moved, I just asked a lot of people for help but you might not know a lot of people or you might be moving on a day where it's not convenient for people to help you. So, you might need to hire movers. Movers are people whose job it is to help people move. You need to pay them obviously uh but they will come to your house or apartment. They will take all of your stuff and they will put it in their moving van and then they will unload it at the new place. So, really good idea to label your boxes. So, the movers Uh, know where to put things when they get to the place that you are moving into. They will have a moving truck or a moving van. Um depending on what vehicle it is, you would use a different name but uh the movers will come in a moving truck or moving van. They will help you load all your things into the moving van and then of course, help you unload them. So, yeah, a moving truck is simply a truck that's used by movers to help people move stuff. You can also rent from places like U-Haul. You can rent a moving van or moving truck and use that to move and then you don't have to pay the movers but you have to pay to rent the moving truck. And you might have something called moving blankets. So, moving blankets are really thick soft blankets that you can put over things that you don't want damaged but they're too big to put in boxes. So, let's say you had a really nice table uh and you didn't want the table to get scratched during the move. Uh it would be be a good idea to use some moving blankets. So, these are big soft blankets that you could put over top of things so that they don't get scratched or dented or damaged during the move. Things get damaged when you move. It's just it's just going to happen and you just have to kind of prepare yourself for the fact that when you get to where you're going, a few things might have been damaged on the way there but moving blankets certainly help quite a bit uh to keep things from getting too damaged. And you might use what's called a dolly or a hand truck. In my part of Canada, we would call this a dolly. It's a two-wheeled dolly and it just makes it a lot easier 
to move things. Um I highly recommend if you move even though I haven't hired movers before I would hire movers if you can afford it and I would certainly recommend that you have a dolly to help you move heavier things. It's just way better. You you won't throw out your back <laughs> if you have a dolly or you're less likely to throw out your back. Um but yeah, I would highly recommend um if you can do it, make sure you have carts and dollies, hand trucks if that's the word you want to use and if you can hire movers, hire movers. I know a few people who hired movers and they loved it. Because four people just came in and carried all their stuff out to a moving truck and then carried all their stuff into the new house and they just thought it was the best experience ever. So, I use this word. I use the word to load. Anytime in English when you are putting things into a car or putting things on a truck. Notice the difference there. You could say put things in a truck but I would probably say um the movers are going to load your things onto the truck. Uh you might load things into the car. This is the act of putting many things into a vehicle, okay? Before you go on a trip, you'll load your car with all your stuff. When you move, you'll load all of your things onto a truck uh so that they can bring it to the new place. So, you'll notice this guy, he has a dolly too on the far side there, the orange thing. Um he's a s- smart person and then I think those blue things in the back of the truck, it's a big stack of moving blankets. Uh and then you certainly want to find people to help if you can. Uh all of the times that I have moved, I've had people help me, usually brothers and sisters and friends. Um just people who come and you can load their vehicle as well as load your vehicle. Um I have helped a lot of people move as well. Uh probably the most fun I had moving was a friend of mine and his wife rented a U-Haul truck. They rented a moving truck. And we moved all of their stuff from Toronto. Um so, it was fun to help them move me and a couple other friends help them load everything onto a big truck. Lots of fun. Uh and then at the end of the day, they bought us pizza which was really really fun. Hey, we're gonna switch to members only chat. As I do that, let me remind everyone of a couple things. One is um members only chat does not mean the lesson is over. The lesson will continue. Uh, in about uh, 10 minutes but uh, I'm going to answer questions from the forum but also questions directly from the chat and I have a note here to check. Let me see here. Yes. Okay, members only chat. Members may ask questions directly in the chat. Thank you for being members. If you are interested in being a member, you can click the button below that says join and it will explain things to you. Uh let me get a question up on the screen here. Um this is from Jagdish. Hi, Bob, sir. Question is, what should I know about the delivery of my goods? Thanks. Love from India. So, I think one of the most important things when you have things delivered or moved by movers is you want to be there when they unload your stuff so that you can make sure nothing gets damaged. That would probably be my biggest concern during a move is that things are gonna get damaged and that's what I would be the most concerned about. Um and then hopefully that they come to the right place. Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea, question over here. Hi, Bob. When you say I rented a room, how do you know whether it means you pay for the place or you get a tenant in your place? Thanks for the wonderful lesson. So, this can so I would probably add the word out. Let me let me back up and set this up. If I need a place to live, I rent a room, okay? I could rent a room from uh my friend. I could rent an apartment from my friend. So, when you say I rent a room, if I owned a room and someone else was going to rent it from me, I would use the word rent out or the phrasal verb rent out. I'm going to rent out my apartment. I'm going to rent out a room. So, when you just say when you just say I rent an apartment in that apartment building, it means you're the person paying and you live there. If you say I rent out an apartment in that building, it usually means you own the apartment. Uh, It's tricky. It's almost in the context of how it's being said. So, hopefully, Kimmy and Kiwi, that made some sense. Foxy Caddy says, hello, Bob. My first time as a member today. Well, thanks for being here, Foxy. Thanks for being a member. 
Learning English with you is great. Thank you for your lessons. No problem. Modag says, hello to the best teacher on the big blue ball. <laughs> Thanks, Mod. Uh, Freddie Wolf says, hi, Bob. Happy to see you. I myself have never needed to move to anywhere but I'm aware of the huge work and stress that moving will occur when I help my sister move. I was tuckered out. Yes, great use of the phrase tuckered out. Freddie was obviously watching the short English lesson on my other channel. When you're tuckered out, it means you're really, really tired. But Freddie, cool that you helped your sister move. Um it is um an interesting day when you move or when you help someone. Lolly lolly. If you were to move and take only three things with you, what would they be? Merci. My laptop, um my phone, uh I can't think of the third thing but it has to be a thing. Some snacks. No, that's a bad answer. My uh my laptop, my phone, my wallet, I guess. Lolly lolly. Portfeuille. Um well. Uh, Maria C. Hi, Bob. Moving is a really stressful activity especially if you have to move a lot of stuff. It's not my case but my dad moved like 15 times during his life. Crazy. Yes. It certainly and I feel like the older you are the more stressful it is because you have more stuff for sure. Modags. Tomorrow will be my first anniversary on your channel. Awesome. So, I thought I should spend some time with you today. Thank you for helping me through this year's trials and tribulations. Thank you for being a sunflower in my life. No problem, Modags. Great to see you again today and uh cool. One year. Awesome. Thanks for being around. Marcos. Hello, teacher Bob. What is the difference between packing and packaging from package? Does the second one exist? Yes. Packing is the act of putting things in boxes. Packaging uh refers to the things that you put stuff in. When you buy a new screwdriver, it comes in plastic packaging. When you buy food, it's all in it has it's in packaging. So, packaging is the stuff um that stuff is in. Now, I, it could be a verb too. So, don't quote me on that. But when I think of packaging, I think of the containers that things are in when I buy them. Al Gore says, hi everyone. Hi, Al. Good to see you here. Linda, my dream is that one day I can move to the land of the free and the home of the brave. That's America. You should move to Canada. No, America's good too but yes, I that would be cool if you could move there. I have always liked the United States but I like it as a place to visit. I lived there for a little bit when I was in university and it was an acquired taste. No offense, Brent. I love your country but I'm gonna stay up here I think. Brent from Speak English with this guy says, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks, Brent for the reminder people. Yes, clicking the like button is an awesome thing to do. It kind of shows you that you appreciate shows me that you appreciate the lesson and I appreciate that. I hope that made sense. Modag says, what's the difference between dolly and a trolley? You know, I wouldn't use the word trolley. It sounds very British to me. So, uh and I think they use the word trolley for shopping cart in Britain. So, yeah, trolley is not I mean, it's a familiar word uh but I wouldn't use it to talk about a dolly. I would use dolly or hand truck. Uh Lolly Lolly says, thanks, Bob. Freddie Wolf says, hey, Bob. That can seem weird but a dolly is called un diable en français. Like the devil? Interesting. Uh Al Gore, working for PepsiCo, I got to move dozens of times all over the world. Yes, if you work for what we would call a multinational corporation, a multinational corporation has factories and offices in all different places around the world and uh you would end up moving quite a bit if you worked for one of them. Um Freddy Le Francais, Bob, I heard of, this is over here. I heard about Boxing Day in the UK but I think it doesn't have anything to do with moving. Have a nice day and weekend. Best wishes. So, in Canada and in the UK, the day after Christmas is called Boxing Day. I don't know why it's called Boxing Day. I always think it's because you're getting rid of all the boxes that the Christmas gifts came in, all the packaging. Um but it's just another holiday and it's kind of cool. I like it a lot. Uh let me get back to the chat. Um Maria C says, good reminder to Brent. Yes. Freddie Wolf says, hey, Bob. What does it mean? Don't quote me that you use sometimes. It means that I'm not sure if what I'm saying is actually a fact. So, I don't want you to say, Bob the Canadian said this. So, it's true. So, I'll say things like, don't quote me on it. It basically means I've just said something. I think it's true but I'm not sure and you should research it yourself. Okay? So, if I say 
uh, Boxing Day in the UK, I think it's the day after Christmas. Don't quote me on it. I'm basically saying don't say to someone, well, Bob the Canadian said that Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. I'm recommending that you actually do your own research. That was a great question by the way. Mode eggs. Linda is already an American as apple pie. She speaks like someone from the Midwest. Very cool. Um Naomi obliterated the like button. Linda says thanks. Al Gore says buggy. It's called in North Carolina grocery cart. Oh, yes. A buggy. Uh Audie the tie. I did. Oh, talking to Brent. Mode eggs and yes. And Lolly. We oui, Diablo Petitcherio hand cart. Very cool. I did not know that. Hey, I'm gonna turn members only chat off but I'm going to keep answering a few questions uh for a minute or two before we get back to the lesson. So, if I see a member question pop up, uh I will answer that for sure. Uh from Azam over here. Hi, sir. Did you know if we want to move in Iran, we should pack everything. Stove, fridge, Dishwasher, that's a pain. We should start to build furnished someday. We do that here in Canada quite a bit too. So, when you move, you might be moving into a furnished apartment which has everything you need or you might be moving into an unfurnished apartment where you need to bring furniture and it can depending on like fridge, stove, dishwashers, that can be specific. When you buy a house, sometimes It's unfurnished but it does come with the stove, fridge and dishwashers. A dishwasher. Sometimes when you buy a house, it's unfurnished but it also um does not come with the fridge, stove and dishwasher. So, uh let me see here. Um Aria says, Ola, Mr. Bob. I just wanted to say that Western people have little fix there a good habit. Moving to other countries is cool. Even in animated series, some countries, some characters move to many countries or other countries. Yeah, um when people are younger, they might move temporarily to another country. Um they might move somewhere for a year just to experience it. They might move for work. Um but yeah, definitely people do move uh from western countries to other countries, sometimes for a visit, sometimes to stay permanently. Uh let's see here. Apple, hi Bob, how are you? I finished my play. Awesome. So, Apple a week or two ago was in a play. Cool stuff. I hope it went well. My question is, is it important to label boxes? Yes. You should definitely label boxes. Otherwise, you have to open all of them in order to see what is in them. Hey, let's get back to the lesson. We'll uh we'll wrap this up. I do want to say um hi to the 381 people watching. If you're new here, don't forget to click the subscribe button. To lend a hand is simply another way to talk about helping. You might say, hey, I'm moving in three days. Can you lend a hand? Hey, I'm moving in three days. Can you help? So, both simply mean to help someone. Uh when my friend moved, like I mentioned earlier in the lesson, I was happy that I was able to lend a hand. I was happy that I was able to help. Um so, it's kind of funny. It's like you're letting them use your hands for the day but obviously, it just means to help. To unload, we talked about this a little bit. I mentioned that when you put things in a vehicle, you are loading the vehicle. When you load a vehicle, you put boxes in, you put stuff in. Um and then when you get to your new house or apartment, you need to unload the vehicle. So, it simply means to take the things back out again. Um you unload and you bring the things into the house. So, when you leave your current house or apartment, you will load a vehicle. When you get to your new house or apartment, you will unload your vehicle. And when in, you're in the house, you'll need to unpack. So, we talked about packing. Packing is when you put everything in boxes. When you get to your new place, you will need to unpack. People don't often unpack the same day they move. This is what I've noticed in terms of when I move and when I help other people move. They usually move all their stuff they unload all their stuff. They put all their stuff in their house like they put all the boxes in and then they usually just uh get a few things out in the kitchen like some plates and then order pizza uh and then usually they set up their bed and then they sleep and then the next day, they start to unpack everything. Usually, the next day is the day where they start to take everything out of the boxes 
and put it in uh, the new places where those things will go. And then we have this interesting phrasal verb to get settled or a uh, verb phrase I guess to get settled. Um sometimes it takes a while to get settled in a new place. After you move, the new place doesn't feel like home right away. It feels like you're in someone else's apartment or someone else's house. It can take a while to get settled. When we talk about getting settled, it means you feel um happy in your new place. It means you've put all of the things in the right spots in your own place. Um so all of the kitchen stuff is in the kitchen. All of the bathroom stuff is in the bathroom. You've arranged the furniture in a way that is pleasant for you. Uh when that's all done, we would say that you have uh, you were able to get settled, okay? It can take a few days or a few weeks or even a few months to uh to get settled, to have that feeling like you are in a place you would call home. Hey, just a few random things here too. It's quite common for older people to downsize. So, we didn't talk about this but one of the reasons people move is because they're in a big house. Maybe they had four or five children and they needed a big house but all of the kids are now older and have moved out. And so, the older couple might then downsize. When you downsize, it means you sell a big house because you don't need a big house anymore and you buy a smaller house or you move into an apartment. So, I know that it's quite common. My mom years ago, um she said, I think I'm going to downsize. All of you have moved out. I'm gonna sell my big house and buy a smaller house. So, definitely a common reason to move as well for older people is they simply want to downsize. They want to live somewhere that's a little smaller because they don't need lots of rooms. And we talked about this earlier as well. Uh sometimes you need to relocate because of work. Um as mentioned, someone mentioned that their bank manager or their dad was a bank manager and moved every four years. So, in that situation, we would say he needs to relocate every four years because of work. Or let's say your dad or mom needed to relocate and you're starting at a new school. Someone could say, why'd you move here? You would say, oh, my mom, we relocated here because of my mom's job or because of my mom's work. And then I'm not sure why this is the last slide. <laughs> I guess because it has the word final in it. Uh, I should have put this earlier in the lesson in terms of uh, the theme of the lesson but when you leave wherever you're leaving, once you load everything in the vehicle, you usually do a final walkthrough. So, you take everything out of your apartment and you load it into a truck or car or you take everything out of your house and then before you drive away, it's always a good idea to do a final walkthrough. This means you go back into the place you're moving out of uh and you just walk and just check to make sure you didn't forget anything. So, you kind of look around to see oh, did we forget a box? Did we forget something somewhere? You do a final walkthrough. Um I actually do this as well when Jen and I leave a hotel. If Jen and I stay in a hotel, when we are the day we are leaving, we pack all our stuff up uh and then I usually just do a final walkthrough of the room. I just check to make sure that we haven't forgotten anything. Um it's not nice to forget stuff. Uh, when you are leaving a place for another place because then you have to go back and try to get it. Well, hey, that was a lesson about moving. I have a few questions that I'm going to answer yet in the queue. Um I see in the chat, Maria C says, my mom wants to move and she will downsize because the apartment where she lives is big enough for four people. A huge place for herself. Yes, very common for older people to think, hey, this apartment or this house is just too big. I'm going to downsize something simpler, something easier to clean, etc. Uh let me see. What was I doing here? I have a few questions to answer. Um let me see here. This I'm gonna make sure they're on track. Some of these are not on topic. Uh let's see here. Al Gore mentions Oh, I should put the questions on the screen. Al Gore says housewarming. I should have put this on here, Al Gore. It is a great suggestion. So, a housewarming gift or a housewarming party 
is something connected to people moving. If a friend of mine moved into a new house, I might stop by and give them a plant or a, another gift as a housewarming gift. It's a gift that you give to say, hey, you moved and here's a gift to make you um just to make you happy about your new place. The people who moved might have a housewarming party. They might say, hey, we just moved. We're having a housewarming party. We're having a bunch of people over. Come on over and enjoy yourself. So, uh, housewarming. Al Gore, thanks for that suggestion. That is great and that's actually that's actually it. We are done. The lesson is over. Let me just check the chat for a sec here to see if there's anything else I need to talk about. Um probably not. So, I should just say bye to a few people. So, let's wrap this up. Thanks for being here. Remember, this lesson will come out in a compacted smaller form in a couple days with better subtitles. I know the subtitles today were auto generated. The version that comes out in two days, the subtitles they'll be a lot more accurate. They're not perfect but they're a lot more accurate. So, do watch that or listen to it. Remember, listening to it on the subway or while you do dishes or while you do household chores, it's just good to hear things two or three times to reinforce what you've learned. Uh thanks to Peepat and Eugene and Linda and Judith and Mario and Mode Eggs and Al Gore and Linda and Dave the Canadian for being here and Audi and I know Brent from Speak English with this guy. Good to see Mode Eggs again. Um Mode says, awesome Mr. Bob. Thank you very much. I hope time change hasn't messed up your internal clock. I don't know why some countries still do this even though almost everyone dislikes it. We are going to stop doing it when New York State stops doing it because that's the best thing. Bye to Key Park and Lolly Lolly and Apple the Frog and Lemon Cute. A um, lot of people to say bye to and I can't say bye to everyone. Thanks for hanging out. I uh, do remember that uh, if you missed Tuesday's lesson, go back and watch it. I think it was a fun one. I enjoyed making it. New lesson coming out this Tuesday is being made as we speak and it was a fun lesson too. It's becoming nicer outside so I can go to more places on the farm to make the video. So, the background will be enjoyable as well. Bye to Naomi and Wanda and Mohammed and I think I said bye to Judith already but I'll say bye again. Uh bye everybody. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Um see you next Friday with another live lesson.